Hello and welcome back to the Zoom Room presented by IU Sports Media. It's Sam Niederman here, Dylan Wallace over to my left, Austin Render down below. They're joining us from actually a little snowier part of Indiana down here in central Indiana, but Dylan's up in the region. He's got snow on the ground. Austin's up in Fort Wayne. He's got snow on the ground up there. Fellas, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Not, not too bad. I don't like this. The snow can go away, though. I'm not a big fan of that. April 17th, and we've got inches, plural, of snow on the ground is, is not an ideal situation. That's not right. We were supposed to be playing – softball was supposed to be playing Minnesota at home this weekend. I don't know if baseball had a home series, too. Yep, but yep. home crazy, series. Crazy town. Obviously, no sports, though, on the spring side in college athletics, and that's our topic for today's show. We are talking all things senior eligibility as it relates to Indiana Hoosier athletes, and we got to talk with three of them coming into today's show – Michelle McCamey from IU Women's Tennis. Austin caught up with Cal Kruger from Indiana Baseball. And I caught up with Gabby Jenkins from IU Softball. What's interesting, guys, all three of these athletes are at different points in their decision-making in terms of their fifth year of eligibility if they wanted to come back for that extra year. Um, the NCAA came out with the ruling that seniors in spring sports would get that extra year of eligibility if they wanted to. Um, just an interesting ruling, but I, I think they got it right from the outset to at least give them that chance. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. You know, as soon as sports started to get canceled or things started to kind of go away, you, you sort of saw, you know, even with some of the winter sports, people were kind of like, oh, my gosh, these seniors, we feel so bad. Is there a chance, you know, they should get an extra year of eligibility? Um, and, you know, with winter, we kind of real, we kind of all knew that was pretty harsh it's going to be hard to make it happen because, I mean, that se the seasons were basically played kind of almost over. But for the spring sports, you know, you got to think of them, baseball, softball, and tennis, the three we have – we just are going to cover in this conversation. They had, they had only started just a little bit, um, you know, at track and field, really hadn't even really started their season yet. So, you know, you know, no, those seniors didn't really get a chance to even really compete in their – what they thought was going to be their final year. So I think giving them the option – um, was definitely the right decision to make. And I know some programs have decided to, you know, because NCAA left it up to the program, so they have decided to not let it happen. But, you know, Fred Glass did announce that he is going to allow seniors to make that choice, which I think is the right thing to do um, because it's it's not as easy a decision as you may think. You know, it might, you know, it's a lot of things go into it more than just like, yeah, I want to play a sport for one more year because there's schooling, financial things. So, you know, it's, it's a more complicated decision, um, but it was the right decision to leave it up to the athletes, though. Yeah, you mentioned it, Dylan. Kind of playing devil's advocate in a way is kind of like what Wisconsin's doing. And they have canceled. Very. Or they did not let anyone come back in spring sports. The interesting thing, and there's some backlash to the NCAA, because there's always backlash to the NCAA. But there's some people saying the NCAA just kind of backed out of this and said the athletic departments get to be the bad guys. And so there's some places that can't afford to bring people back and can't afford to continue to give scholarships. So like Wisconsin, they had to cancel. So that's an interesting side of things, but I completely agree with you guys. I think the decision was good. I love what Fred Glass did. If you have the finances, let the seniors decide themselves. Because like you said, Dylan, there's more to this than just, hey, I want to go play baseball for one more year. Or, hey, I want to go play tennis for one more year. It's a whole other year of schooling. It's a whole other year of financing. It's a whole other year of not going on to whatever you're looking for. And for somebody like Cal Kruger, who we'll get to, he's looking to get into the business world. And that's just delaying that another year. So there's certainly a lot of aspects uh, here. And like Dylan said, it, it's not as simple as just, hey, I want to go play sports. Yeah, especially, you know, with, with these with these spring sports and, it, you know, these spring sports are obviously all, all great. But like, I mean, how many of these sports are these athletes planning to try and go pursue professionally? You know, aside from maybe baseball and softball. I'm not too sure, you know, a lot of the spring sports really have allowed that much of an opportunity. A lot of these students are at Indiana University or other universities for their education, and we're planning to move on and try to get a job and whatnot. So, you know, it's more than just, as we've talked about, just kind of like that sport and, you know, that kind of stuff like that. And if you come back for another year, most of these sports go into the summer, too. 
So you're not only are you coming back for another school year, then you're not getting into the job market until late next summer because, I mean, baseball goes into June. Softball can go that deep, too. I mean, you think about that, that you're, you're putting a whole other year plus on the shelf and spending it at college where maybe you don't want to do that. And there's some people that will, some people that won't, and we're kind of seeing that, and we'll see that today in the three people that we talked to. It's interesting, though, because – if these seniors do come back, we might see some super teams, and that's something I think we're going to see on the softball side with their 48 team. They're going to have a great recruiting class coming in next year, and then four seniors coming back, including their ace in the circle, and Gabby Jenkins, who we'll hear from in just a second, who's probably their best batter at the plate. I mean, you're going to see some really stacked teams across different sports, no matter what, who it is, if there are seniors coming back. Yeah, the baseball team and Cal Kruger was saying, I mean, you could see 55 people in that dugout next year. And, and that's an absurd amount of people. And, and that's just something that also plays into it. I mean, you gotta, there's going to be extra competition. There's going to be extra talent next year. And like you said, Sam, the softball team, it's going to be a balance of talent and an experience and veteran leadership. And it's going to be a weird mesh, but it's going to be a great mesh for like the softball what team well unanimously decided to come back it's going to be really interesting i i am excited to see how spring sports kind of flow next year with all these people coming back well let's take a look at what these three athletes had to say we'll start with gabby jenkins iu senior outfielder for the softball team here's our conversation with her earlier in the week we are so glad to have you gabby thank you for taking the time how are you today i'm doing well thanks for having me excited always to Join you, Sam. So doing well. Excited to share what we got going here. All right. Gabby is joining us from Southern Indiana. She's down on the Kentuckiana border at Floyd's Knobs, and we cannot be happier to bring her on to share great news. Gabby, last week, you and your senior teammates, Katie Lacefield, Bella Norton, and Emily Gooden, all announced that you'll be returning for a fifth year of eligibility to play with the softball team next spring. What went into that decision for you and your teammates to come back for one more round with the Hoosiers? Yeah, well, not much went into the decision to say yes, I would say for most of us, if like all the things that we needed to be there were there. And luckily we attend this awesome university with some awesome administrators that really do value the student athlete. And I think that's very evident in, you know, um, them really supporting this fifth year because I think that it's easy to look around the landscape of college athletics right now and see that not everyone um, made that decision and it's totally understandable because it's not necessarily an easy decision to make with things that we don't even know about as student athletes like the financial side of things and we're just thankful that we have a department that made coming back very easy um, and that really does value the student athlete experience. So we're excited and especially that all four of us, I mean, we have Josie who is going to move on and do some really amazing things. She is going to grad school and she was already in her fifth year of eligibility. So besides Josie, we do get to have the four of us back. And I think that is a really unique thing as well. Just getting for year four of our program kind of really making strides. It's going to be a really neat year with team 48. Yeah, you got that right. That's what makes it so special is you guys have the band back together. It's a it's a four woman band now coming back as a fifth year senior class. How satisfying is it to know that you're going to look into the circle and see Emily Gooden again? Are you going to see Bella Norton behind the plate? Or you get another year to play with Katie Lacefield, a good friend? Yeah, it, it gives me chills thinking about it. And I think something we could all agree on the four of us and our coaches is just that like, this year's it's just like a gift and we truly I think it's it's pretty unreal still and it will just continue to be like wow like I'm we're not supposed to be here but like we get to be here and it is very unique and exciting especially with the state of our program and just really to get on our feet this year and embrace all that we have learned through our four years will be a really neat thing and inviting some really talented freshmen and our already talented underclassmen and really solid um, juniors into that is really a special thing. So definitely going to be pumped up to see Gooden on the mound, Bella behind the plate. Um, Katie, really 
field and solid ground balls, but it's going to be exciting. So all around, whatever the year brings, um, we're open to that and we're excited about that and we're excited to just grow our culture a little bit more. And you guys have been able to stay connected during this interim period via Zoom. I hear that the workouts are pretty intense with JD. What are some of the examples of how you guys have been able to stay in tune with each other, whether that be working out or with your little sis program that you guys have really gotten into? Yeah, this is such a great time to engage a bunch of different ways just because it's unique in that we don't have, though I think everyone probably in this time is finding that there are actually, you know, more commitments than we would think. And especially being in school and stuff where you have like maybe a lot of Zoom calls or something like that, but still you don't have the transition time that it usually takes during the day, like 45 minutes on the bus. And then like, you know, that whole waiting pattern, all of things like that. Like we don't have any of that right now. So you have, you have a lot of extra time and I think something that was really cool that you mentioned is we got to, so we have this little sis program and we got to really engage them. I think it was a couple of weeks ago now and have um, somewhat of a really like engaging and entertaining time for them. And we were hoping to help their parents out in some way, maybe get them moving and excited and something different because we know as we are in this routine of kind of can be monotonous at time where you're just at home, but, we wanted them to have something outside of that routine. And I think it was very much a success and it probably filled us up more than it even filled the girls that we were excited and fun. One of the things we did on it was Hoosier says, and instead of Simon says, and you had to run and get your mom's lipstick, red lipstick and put it on like it was eye black. And it was just such a highlight. Cause then you're just looking at all these little girls with, and all of us too, with um, lipstick on our eyes, like it's eye black or something, but just things like that, that really, have been fun to capitalize on and that's all credit to our um our team just really engaging with that but also our coaches are really awesome in really putting all these things together we ask them hey can we do this and they organize whatever that looks like and so whether it's little sis zoom call or whether it's like last night we had a check-in with our team and they're focused on like we're not just going to do to do right now and I think that is a very respectable choice and I love that because it would be so easy to sit here and yes we have eight hours a week um to like work on we could watch film we could do all these things and like we will do what is productive but also they realize like this is a time where we're not just going to sit on a zoom call and you know talk for hours about things that maybe aren't relevant right now so I really think that's been a cool thing um and also just we have these brave groups where we get to engage with how we want our team to grow in this time and how we want to um, brand our team and just everything from relational things to how we're going to take care of our environment even when we're not all together. That's what we've kind of been working on and just different habitudes. So there's a ton going on, but yeah, engaging right now has been a major highlight and I would say everyone is enjoying the different prompts that we've gotten to dive into and invite others to dive into as well. Love to hear it. I imagine you got to be pretty skilled to win a game of Hoosier Says, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You mentioned the coaching staff as well and the IU Athletics Administration, how crucial they've been in making this transition possible with a fifth year of eligibility. What is going to be something that you really look forward to in terms of working with the staff, again, the coaching staff of Shonda Stanton, Kendall Fern, and of course, Coach Bell as well, Chanda Bell, pitching coach. Yeah. You know, that's hard to even put into like one thing or one comment, but I think what I'm most looking forward to is that like you don't spend a moment with them um, if you have like a desire to grow and not grow and so I am looking so forward to just a year of growth that this is going to be in just such a bonus that it is because you know easily like either way it would have been great moving on but I think that this is just such a gift and to spend moments and you know this you've been on the road with them and so much time but they're pretty contagious and so to be like coached up by coach Fern in the outfield and really be pushing like it's not just about outfield it's about like she just like really has this way of pushing that is that is really like 
transferable to whatever setting we're going to be in, whether I'm teaching, whether whatever it is. And then thinking about like coach, I mean, this lady has every possible way of helping you, coming alongside you and helping you grow where you are and really just teaching you these lessons that, gosh, we're like this season of life is so unique. So, and then coach Bell, of course, just really getting to be in tune with her preparedness and the way that she teaches through that and really her passion for the game. I'm excited for all that this bonus year will bring with them. We're calling it the victory lap. So lots of victory in store and relational victory is one of my favorites with them. They're just, like I said, you can't just be around them and not um, be challenged to grow and in a great way. So I'm excited for that. Awesome. Sounds like it's going to be a big victory year for Team 48. That is Gabby Jenkins, Indiana University softball senior. Gabby, thanks so much for taking the time again today. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, God bless you down there at Floyd Knobs. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. (laughs) We move on to our next athlete, Michelle McCamey, IU Women's Tennis. And Dylan, you had a chance to talk with her. And this decision is something that's actually uh, not complete for her right now. She's still in the process of figuring out what she wants to do with that eligibility. Right. Yeah, she is. You know, um, she, she was planning to graduate in three years. Um, she had a three-year plan to graduate and then move on to the Indiana School of Optometry. So she's going to go to grad school in Bloomington. She's still going to be in Bloomington no matter what. But now she's conflicted with if she wants to play and try to do that schooling, grad school at the same time. You know, that's you know, it's a lot, it's kind of hard, it's hard to do. It's a lot to balance, especially with optometry. There's a lot of clinical labs. You got to be, you got to be there on site. It's not like you can just do it online or do it on the team bus or stuff like that. Um, so she's kind of concerned about that. And one of the, one of the main things you'll hear her talk about is really like, she doesn't, you know, this, this past season before it got cut short, you know, she, she said her coaches had her on a three-year plan. So she was, this was her third year, which is her final year. And she said she was playing the best tennis she's ever played. She had all the fundamentals down and she was really rolling. And one of the things she's concerned about is, you know, she doesn't want, you know, because she's so focused on school to have her tennis suffer and her not be as good. And she doesn't want her grades not to be as good because she's still trying to play tennis. So it's a really, really interesting contrast. Um, so that'll be something that, you know, you'll be able to hear her talk about, which is a really great perspective. All right. Well, why don't we get into that conversation? Here is Dylan's chat with Michelle McCamey from IU Women's Tennis. What's up, everybody? This is Dylan Wallace. Joining me in the Zoom room right now is Michelle McCamey. She is a senior on the Indiana women's tennis team. Um, Michelle, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thanks for having me in the Zoom room. This is definitely different than any other interview I've ever done, but I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Definitely. And, you know, I know you're, you're from Kentucky, so is that where you're at right now? Yes, yes. I've been at home for a few weeks, maybe, I don't even know how long anymore. Um, Ever since our season was canceled, I came home like the following week. And yeah, so I've just been hanging out at home where my mom can take care of me and, you know, I have unlimited food and I'm not stuck in an apartment in Bloomington. So yeah, and I guess, I mean, what are some of the things aside from taking online classes that maybe you're doing to keep yourself busy or just distracted during this yeah so um I decided that when I finished tennis and I was thinking this would be in May um that I was going to train for a marathon because I was like I want to do something right after tennis to like set the like mood for my workout life for my next like 50 years I'm like I don't want to just fall off like I've been working out three hours a day for the last however long of my life, and now I'm not doing anything. So that was my plan to start doing that in May. So I just started early because why not? And I have all the time in the world. So I've been running a lot. Um, And then my mom and I also like to do a lot of like DIY stuff. So right now we're kind of just working in the yard, but we also sanded and refinished a table and chairs and we're just kind of, you know, taking it day by day there's like not a ton to do but I haven't felt bored yet we've been like pretty busy so oh that's good that's good I mean the marathon I mean how many miles are you trying to run a day I know that's a pretty uh, tough so, process for that I'm up to 10 so far but I haven't been doing like that long every day I kind of did like I'll do like three four eight like 
four, four, nine. Like, so I'm kind of trying to like slowly bump it up and just have like the medium days in between. But I was originally thinking like maybe half marathon, but now I'm thinking I have all the time in the world. If I can like push past it, then maybe I'll try to do the full. So we'll see. I'm up to 10 so far and it's not, it's not terrible. I think tennis like has made me like really strong cardiovascularly and like all of the workouts and stuff we have to do so I'm not really so much out of breath it's just that my legs aren't used to like being like running straight for that long because I'm used to more like sprints and stuff um so just getting used to that but this has not been so bad so far so I'm hopeful that maybe I can do it was it tough to sort of come to terms with the fact that you know the the season was over and especially for you you know at least at this time you know this was what you thought could have been like your last match ever right um I think like in the moment that didn't really like set in it definitely took a few days um because yeah we didn't know that they were obviously going to give eligibility back or anything yet so I think that's why we were really hoping to get to play the Iowa match just because I think things are different when you know it's like your last whether you you know I always try my hardest and I think I would say that for everyone on the team but it's definitely a different feeling when you know it's your last match I think we were just really wanting that like feeling and um so yeah it took definitely a couple days to set in I was like I wouldn't really even say like upset just like this is like madness like there's so much that like I didn't get to experience yes like in that a big 10 season or like a senior day or a big 10 tournament or possibly even NCAAs um but like just with people like losing their jobs and like even more things like bigger than that it was kind of like yes like this sucks for me but like I think this is just a bigger thing um as a whole and I think that's something I've kind of had to like realize to like not feel so bad for myself is like um and have kind of a positive outlook toward the whole thing is like it's not just affecting me and while my tennis season ultimately to me is like the most important thing like there's so many things for every single person like people that are getting married during this or like you know like having things that are like so much bigger than that canceled um I think is kind of put it in perspective for me but yeah it definitely does like suck and especially knowing not knowing at that time that anyone would get eligibility back that's definitely hard too yeah definitely and you know as we just kind of alluded to it you know March 30th the NCAA announced that you know the seniors if they wanted they could get an extra year of eligibility so essentially like a fifth year I guess Um, Mm -hmm. but uh, and, you know, Indiana, you know, Fred Glass, he, the athletic director, he just announced how Indiana is going to allow their seniors to do that. I know some programs have aren't, but I guess um, on your end, I know you, you said, you know, you haven't made a decision yet on whether right. or not you want to come back. Um, You're planning to go to, you know, the Indiana School of Optometry for optometry mm-hmm. school, graduate school. So I guess um, what kind of, you know, you, since you haven't decided yet, I guess, what are you kind of weighing back and forth and what kind of the things that you have to take right. into consideration? So originally my coaches are asking me like when they kind of said loosely that eligibility was going to be given, but didn't know the details. They're asking like what that changes for me. And I was like, what do you mean? Like I, I, my issue wasn't eligibility. It was that I couldn't balance both optometry and tennis. And I had kind of made that decision. So I'm like, this doesn't really like change things for me. And then, and they asking to be sure and like well maybe I'm not sure I'm like maybe I should look into it again because I'm like I know I decided that it was too much based on like you know what a few people had told me or based on the recommendations of um some people at the optometry school I'm like maybe I can look into it again and this is definitely a special circumstance I'm like I definitely want to play my last tennis match knowing that it's my last match and it was definitely like you know not how anyone wanted it to end um and then my teammate Caitlin Bernard she decided she's gonna come back like so fast um she was really excited and um she's for sure gonna take her extra year 
And so I think like just thinking of that and like we were like kind of in this last year together. Um, I'm like, well, if Caitlin's doing it, then like, you know, maybe I should look into it. So I think the things that I'm kind of weighing in the decision, I've had to like reach out again to the optometry school and kind of see, cause I'm like now that we're closer to time, maybe like the fall schedule is out. So that was like another problem. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to have class during practice and like, you know, it's not like I can make my own schedule as much as I can in undergrad. So, um, I got the fall schedule and it was like better than I thought it would be with like practice and stuff. So that was definitely good. And so I reached out to a couple of students um, and they were like a little more encouraging, like, yeah, like maybe you can do it. Um, and so I, I'm hopeful that um, maybe I can try both, but I'm still kind of talking to um like my advisor within the optometry school because they're like a little bit hesitant. So I just, I, I really obviously really want to play tennis, but ultimately what's most important is like succeeding in optometry school because that's going to be my future profession and how well I do is going to determine like not only where I go on my rotations, but like where I get a future job. And so ultimately like I'm keeping in the forefront of my mind that that's going to be the most important to me but I'm also really hopeful that I can balance tennis with it because I do want to have the the last year that I'm really like hoping for um so I think because it was like self-imposed my last year I was okay with it and I was like enjoying all of these last things knowing that they were going to be my last but since this wasn't self-imposed and I didn't get to do that now I'm hopeful to try it so yeah I think I'm just weighing like if I would be so overloaded that I can't do my best in both optometry school and tennis because I don't want to be so overwhelmed that I am like failing in some aspect you know like if I'm not going to be able to like bring my best to practice every day then I don't really want to do it because I think my coaches know like having had me as a player for three years like I'm going to show up every day at practice and do my best and if I feel like I can't do that anymore then I don't want to like you know taint that relationship with my coaches because they seem like they remember me as my last year being like so strung out that I like, you know, couldn't even like do my best at practice. And I think another thing I'm weighing is that if I can't like make practice times um, with my team and I'm having to do some like individual stuff because of class times or like tests or studying or whatever, then that's not something I really want to do either because I think most of the fun of playing a college team sport is being with the team so if I'm not able to be with the team practicing with the team getting better with the team then that's not something I really want to do either so those are kind of what I'm weighing but I'm hopeful that maybe I can figure something out but yeah definitely and you're sort of in a unique situation because you had made the decision to graduate in three years because right. you had kind of decided you know once I go to optometry school I don't want to be playing tennis but now you know obviously what's all this happened this is a, another decision has come up for you. I guess, I guess it kind of shows a testament to maybe how much you enjoyed your time with the program and kind of how you wanted that final year. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, it was kind of, it was definitely hard to make that decision the first time when I decided, okay, I'm only going to play three years. It was emotional and hard to make that decision. But when it was self-imposed, I was it, like, I was enjoying this last year and trying to make the best of all of my like last things, like I said. So, um, yeah, this definitely makes it a special circumstance. And I don't even know actually like how it applies. Cause I know that like the rule that Fred Glass made was kind of like for seniors. So I technically am a senior. Do I fall under that or do, am I like good to go for my technical third year of eligibility? I don't know. It's just really confusing. I think our um, athletic, like uh, I think Jeremy Gray is called our like senior athletic 
director representative or whatever he is um he helps our team a ton and he was like you're situation might be one of the most unique in the whole department and I'm like yeah I think so um it's definitely just different because of I was already kind of shortening my career and now I'm like reconsidering so it's definitely weird um but yeah yeah it's definitely a lot to think about so that's kind of what I've been doing also these last few weeks you ask what I've been doing that's been taking a lot of my time to yeah. think about this so definitely I mean I guess is there somewhat of a comfort at least for you to know you know no matter what you decide you'll at least be in Bloomington next or hopefully next year hopefully you know the classes resume in the fall right. semester um yeah. you'll at least be there whether you're playing or not you'll at least you know maybe be you could at least go watch your matches or be, on the, be around them and whatnot yeah like um I think that's definitely a comfort not only for like this situation but just in general um that I think a lot of seniors athletes and non-athletes um are experiencing like I'm sure you feel this way too that you were excited to experience your last few months in Bloomington and you know you might never be in Bloomington again as a student so when you come back like with your kids in 20 years like that's not the same so you were excited yeah. to experience your last few months in Bloomington and so I think that's really comforting to me that I know I'm going to be in Bloomington for four more years so I'm not like you know saying goodbye to IU as a student yet and I'm not saying goodbye to Bloomington so I think that's comforting um and knowing that even if I'm not on the team I can still be around the team um they've become my closest friends um and I can still watch them so I think that's definitely comforting in that if I don't play I'll still be um around and my like time at IU isn't done yet um which I'm definitely not ready for it to be which is why I decided to stick around so um yeah, yeah. you mentioned you talked to some people uh with the in the autometry school I guess um you know I guess it's pretty rare I guess I don't know many how many times they have you know the autometry school would have an at or even any grad program has like necessarily athletes in it so I guess what has been the response on that front but I think the one thing that makes optometry school a little bit different is just that not only is it four years but it's a doctoral program and just the clinical hours and like the lab hours that you actually have to be in the building so that was kind of their concern for me is not that I couldn't like study and balance the material um it's just that some of the material isn't available so I couldn't like study on the bus like I am able to an undergrad and like Annabelle can do um because sometimes like that's when you're sacrificing your time to hang out with your teammates in the hotel or on the bus or when traveling and so their concern for me was that you need to be in the building to practice on equipment that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that you obviously can't like take with you yeah. and also that you need other students to practice on or with and that they were concerned that so like if they practice right after class which is when I would be in practice that no one's going to want to come back and practice like with me at 8 p.m. when they finished at five and they got to go home and like you know live the rest of their day um and so that was kind of their concern for me that it's not necessarily that I couldn't manage it but with me having to like leave at certain times or not be as flexible with when I could be like in the actual building um that I couldn't like necessarily make it work as I could if it was just like the hours in information instead of in person like learning. Is there a specific date you've been given on like when you actually have to decide whether you want to use the extra year or not? Yeah so I haven't been given a specific date. I'm sure if I keep drawing it out maybe they will give me a hard date but I think the good thing with what IU has done is like, I can take my time. I'm not like taking someone's scholarship that's coming in as a freshman or um, taking like a potential recruit scholarship um, because of how they like decided, how Fred decided to um, honor like this year of eligibility for the seniors. So um, I think that gives me a little more flexibility in time than it would if, um, like other people were being affected by my decision. Um, 
So I'm hopeful that I can decide at least by like midsummer and who even knows like with the coronavirus how things are going to be developing um by then and if our classes in the fall were like online then obviously I could totally balance both if we were able to practice by then um because the main issue is like being in person so um not that I want school to be online for this next year, but if it was, I could totally balance both. So anyway, who knows? Last thing for you, I guess you you ended the season. I think you won 10 of your last 11 singles matches and you guys won your last, you beat Miami of Ohio, right? So yes. I guess, is it any, you know, compromise that you were able to, you know, at least maybe end this season on a win, um, doing so well yeah. individually and stuff like that? Yeah, so I think this whole season I lost two singles matches I think um and that wasn't something like in the moment I was really recognizing but definitely like looking back I'm like okay I'm glad I was able to like win that last match and um even though I'm saying like it wasn't special because I didn't know it was the last match it definitely feels a lot better to win than to lose which is the case in everything in life um so yeah, it definitely is great that I was going out on a high note. I just wish that obviously I could have like finished on a high note. I would have loved to see like um, where that could have gone because I really felt like I was playing the best that I ever have. Um, my coaches kind of told me I was always on a two-year plan, which what they meant by that because they changed a lot when I came in my freshman year and then continued to kind of change things because we didn't change everything at once, um, like into my sophomore year. And so I was finally kind of like done and adjusted totally to all of the changes that they had made. And so I was really enjoying like this year, I was feeling really confident where I haven't the past two seasons so much in my strokes. I was feeling totally comfortable with all of the changes and everything that they had made. So um, yeah, I was definitely excited to kind of ride that out, but maybe I'll get to have a whole nother season, which is even better. So. Um, yeah, I'm definitely thankful for that opportunity. And I'm so thankful that IU is kind of honoring that because I know a lot of Big Ten schools are not. Definitely. Well, so Michelle, thanks so much. We really appreciate you kind of giving us that student athlete perspective. You know, it's it's definitely one that, you know, not a lot of people take in consideration. So uh, it was really nice hearing your perspective. Um, so thank you again. Yeah, thank you, Dylan. Um, I think a lot of people um, with the eligibility ruling like just think that it's an easy decision for athletes, but I know a lot of people have jobs lined up or different things. So what a lot of people don't understand, um, or like me with grad school, that um, people, it's not always the easiest decision. So it still does hurt that our seasons were cut, even though we did get the eligibility back but I think overall is a great decision by the NCAA and so anyway thank you for having me and thank you for asking my perspective and um, it was fun talking to you in the zoom room <laughs> of course good luck uh, with the with the marathon training I hope uh, yes thank you as you will all right see ya <laughs> Michelle McCamey checks in still figuring out what she's going to do optometry school that's definitely uh, uh, above my pay grade for sure. Not, not, not something that I'm familiar with or looking to dabble with, but good for her. And we hope she comes to a good decision. Now we go to the other end of the spectrum. IU baseball, Cal Kruger caught up with Austin. Uh, and Austin, this young man is ready to move on. He is not going to come back for his final year of eligibility. Yeah, and I'll leave the explanation up to him when we send it to him, but it, it makes a lot of sense to me. He explains himself, and, and he's really thought this through, and this is something that that Cal has been really adamant about and something that he, he feels at peace with. And so I'm, I, I think it's a great conversation. It's much shorter than your guys' conversations just because he's not coming back, so there wasn't a whole lot of, like, okay, how are you staying fit? How are you staying in shape? Because he is moving on. But he's at peace with it, and his explanation makes sense to me. He will not be the, the last to decide this way. I'm sure there will be many others that follow his path. But uh, he's got a bright future in front of him, and he's ready to move on from the baseball playoff. All right, good stuff. Let's get into it. It's Cal Kruger, IU pitcher. He chatted with Austin just a little bit ago. Cal, first off, how's quarantine been for you? What have you kind of been up to in the past month or so? Yeah, it's it's going all right. I mean, I'm kind of in the same state we're all in. Kind of starting to lose my mind a little bit, getting locked, staying in the house and 
you know, I'm the person that likes to get outside and do as much as I can. So trying to do my best to make the most of the situation. Obviously, baseball season cut short, and it was disappointing, I'm sure, for everybody on the team. Where were you when you got the news, and what was kind of that instant reaction when you heard? Yeah, it was it was devastating for all of us, not just me. I mean, it was just devastating when you go from something so unexpected like that, and it just takes a while to hit you, you know. And you know, those next those uh, the next few days after that were really tough on all of us. So it was just unexpected, and you know, it's just hard to, you know, see everyone in that situation. And, you know, there's a lot of tears shed. And what's, what's the next step, I guess? NCAA gives you the waiver. I, I, I've heard that you said you're not going to take it. What's the reasoning behind that? I know there's a lot of people doing both ways. So I just want to hear your reasoning behind not taking it. Right, yeah. Um, so as we all know, baseball is typically not a full scholarship sport, right? So, you know, with, with IU, they said um, – they said that you get your same scholarship as what you've been on, right? And unfortunately, with for me, IU doesn't really have, and I'm graduating this spring, right? IU doesn't really have the gradu- a graduate program that I'm interested in. So unfortunately, it doesn't really, like, I guess, make sense for me to play baseball when I don't have any academic reason to be there, essentially. It'd be expensive. And number two, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just ready for that next chapter. I had a great career at IU, and, you know, I just – I was just ready to call it, you know, ready to call it while I was ahead, basically, and just enjoy my, I enjoyed my time there and everything like that, and everything went great. So I was just, I was just at peace with my decision. What are some of the, the moments when you look back, some of those moments you'll think fondly of in your years at Indiana Baseball? Definitely the, some of the postseason, you know, the regional experiences that I got to go to. Um, unfortunately, our season got cut short, but if, uh, I, I was. This would have been my claim to fame if we would have happened to make a regional this year, which we were obviously on pace to do. Uh, me and Jeremy Houston would have been the first IU people to have four regionals underneath their belt, which would have been something pretty cool for the program. But uh, you know, it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. What's uh, What's next for Cal? What What's next uh, after you graduate? What are you thinking could be the right. future for you? Right. So. Ideally, I get a job, but unfortunately, with the situation that we're in right here, it's not as easy as it seems to get a job right this time of year. Um, I actually just got engaged, so I'm congratulations. Up to Andy, my, thank you with my fiance and moving on to, with that kind of thing. So that's also a main reason, right, why I'm moving on with my life. But uh, yeah, so I'm just trying to get a job right now, and I'm on the job hunt. So hopefully, some good professional opportunities open up for me. What what do you feel? I mean, it feels like from being around the program this year for myself, it feels like this team's in great hands with Coach Mercer. What do you feel like the future is for this program? Right, and yeah, he's going to do great with this. He's going to use it as a great. He's going to make the most of the situation. He's going to use it as a, develop, a chance to develop more players. You know, get everyone an extra year of development is going to be huge for them on the field next year. And he'll use it to the best of his abilities. I mean, obviously, it's not a perfect situation, but he's the guy that'll make the most of it, and he'll have his guys right for next year. Well, I asked this to a lot of people during this quarantine, so I'm trying to see if people are getting creative. What's something fun, something creative you've done while you've been at home? <laughs> I haven't done a whole lot creative, so I like to go fishing. <laughs> I like to go outside. You know, I like to take walks, and uh, you know, I like to golf. So that's basically been my uh, go-to. I have not done anything too creative. Well, there you go. Keeping busy, I guess, is, is the yeah. name of the game right now. Well, thanks, it Cal, for, really uh, for joining us. We really appreciate it. All right, so there you have it. Cal Kruger with Austin Render. He is not going to come back. Ready to go to Indianapolis, though, and pursue his career in business. So good for Cal. Best wishes to him. Fellas, before we wrap things up on this edition of the Zoom Room, final thoughts. We'll start with you, Dylan. Yeah, you know, just a, a huge thank you. I know we all thank them, but to, to Gabby, Cal, and Michelle, you know, um, we, we, we sit here and we talk about, you know, if this was the right decision, if it wasn't the right decision, what could this mean for the athletes? But to really hear all of their perspectives, to return, whether you're not sure, to not return, um, it was just really great to hear. You know, we, we, can only, we can only speculate so much. So to be able to hear from all three of those athletes, um, it, it was really cool. It was really awesome to listen to. Um, I hope everybody else feels the same way when they you know, are able to listen to these conversations. Um, but, yeah, I, I really – enjoyed kind of hearing their perspectives um because you know and it just me and it just shows you know even if you're not returning it just shows how much these sports have meant to them over the last three or four years um 
you know, we, we all we all are in sports media, so we obviously have a passion for sports. Um, and to hear these athletes, you know, weigh in on whether or not they want to kind of move on with their lives or stay and play, um, it's it's really cool because it just shows how much passion they have for it, even if they do move on. Like I said, so you know, it's just big thanks to them. Um, it was it was great perspective and a great listening. Yeah, I hope it. I hope it gives those who maybe we're just assuming spring sports would come back. It gives them a little bit of a perspective of, hey, this is not that easy of a decision. I mean, this wasn't something that Cal came to and said, yep, immediately, I'm not coming back. He had to think about it. There was a process to it. Obviously, they were all devastated and in shock for a little while that their seasons were just wiped out. But I, I, that's my hope is that people listen to these interviews and whether it's Gabby saying she's coming back or – whether it's any of them, it's, it's getting the perspective of knowing that this is not that easy of a decision. It's not just, I want to play next year's sports. I think there's people out there that think that. It's deeper than that. And I hope this kind of sheds some light on that because there's so much to this decision. And like Dylan said, thanks to the three athletes for kind of sharing that with us because I'm sure it's not an easy decision and maybe something they don't really want to talk about again. But we appreciate them kind of shedding light on their process. Uh, well done, fellas. Well said. Again, another big thank you to Gabby Jenkins, Michelle McCamey, and Cal Kruger, all joining us for this edition of the Zoom Room. Fellas, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Dylan Wallace, Austin Render, you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. All righty. We'll see you next time on the Zoom Room presented by IU Sports Media.